Hello and welcome to the Broadway Q&A presented by Playbill and The Growing Studio. I'm Danny George. Every Monday and Wednesday, we sit down with different directors, choreographers, music directors, composers, lyricists, you name it. Every Friday, we chat with musical theater colleges. If you are not following us on Instagram, please do so for all the latest information on all of our live streams. It's at Playbill and at The Growing Studio. You should see it there in just a sec. Now, today's guest is uh, extra special. I am very excited to uh, chat with him today. Uh, he has brought us such hits as Ain't Too Proud, On Your Feet, and Memphis. Sergio Trujillo, are you there? I'm right here. Hello, Danny. How Hi, are you? How's it going? I'm well, thank you. I'm well, thank you. Happy to join you today. I'm happy you're here, too. <laughs> uh, Sergio, where are you quarantining? I've actually been in my apartment for the last four months uh, in Chelsea, in Manhattan, right, right in the island. I'm imprisoned by the island of Manhattan. <laughs> yeah, well, you are a true New Yorker. Um, Sergio, I want to start today's broadcast by just taking uh, a quick uh, 30 seconds, if that's okay, to have a moment of silence uh, for Nick Cordero, whom I know you've worked with. And then I'd like for you to say a couple words about him, if that's all right with you. Of course. Awesome. If we could all just close our eyes and take a few uh, seconds, that'd be great. I want to talk a little bit about Nick, if that's okay. Uh, Sergio, can you talk about working with Nick on Bronx Scale uh, and just how special and unique of an actor he was? You know, it's um, there's a lyric in the show, one of the songs that Nick sang so beautifully called One of the Great Ones. Um, the lyric was actually referring to uh, his first love. and uh, But I want to use that lyric to enclose what, describe what Nick was about. Um, and um, first of all, I know that all of us in our community and really the people like my a Bronxdale family, we're all ex um, extremely sad today because um, we've all been holding on. We've all been praying together so that Nick could come and be and survive this horrible, horrible disease, this horrible virus, this horrible um, pandemic. Um, and um, but you know Nick, <laughs> he was extraordinary. You know he's just, and I was so proud of him. You know it's not very often we see a leading Latin man on stage. So every day when I would come to rehearsal, I had so much pride for him because he was so good. He was so great. He embodied the world, and I and I saw his early ascent. You know when I saw him and and. Um, and bullets over Broadway, uh, you know, I just, I, he was incredible. And I didn't know he was Latin until we did a Bronx still. And, and so for me, you know, my, my connection to him was even deeper. And I'm not denying anyone else's sort of connection to Nick, but the fact that, you know, and, and this, in, in our community, to be able to be Latin, to be able to do the thing that we do with love and with such, such integrity, and to be so good, um, so we're all hurting today, and um, you know we want to pay our respects to to Nick's family, to his beautiful wife Amanda, and to his his baby boy Elvis, um, and and just to let them know that we are sending them all all of our love, and our and our thoughts and our prayers are with them, and it's uh, it's, a, it's a great loss to our community. Yeah, you know, uh, I didn't know Nick, and even just talking about it. It, it, you know, my heart is just out of my chest. Uh, Amanda and uh, Elvis, if you're watching, know that your community is here to support you and love you and uh, give you the strength that uh, is needed during this time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Danny. Um, Sergio, so I want to talk a little bit about you, if that's okay. Of course. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about how you got uh, to be Sergio Trujillo? Um, <laughs> I understand that you uh, came from Colombia and you moved to New York, is that is that right? Yeah, actually, I had a uh, stop in between. I actually, I grew up in Colombia. Then at the age of 12, my family moved to Toronto. 
So I migrated from uh, Columbia to Toronto, and then in my mid twenties, mm -hmm. I uh, I moved to New York uh, to pursue the big American dream of of dancing on Broadway. Um, right. uh, yeah, that was that was that was the uh, that was the journey. The journey that got me here just a little bit over 30 years ago. Now, Toronto is such an amazing city. It's filled with so much arts and culture. How did living there uh, in, uh, invest in you? How did you see that you wanted to do musical theater uh, from living there? You know, I, I mean, I didn't come to to really to dance until I was and I was 18, 19 years old. Although I danced wow. socially with my family. My family, they're all big dancers. I mean, everyone dances salsa, but not, nothing. You know, there's no there's no actual in training so uh but my family is is the family of dance music and dance and social right. dance um so i had danced my entire life but um you know i i took the leap of faith you know that i um that um you know i wanted to explore that part of of our of our of our heritage um and see how far it could get me because i loved i love dance you know it's it was my it's my gift and and i didn't want to waste it um and and so i felt like but what Toronto did was it just gave me a, a strong foundation, a strong foundation about family, community, and uh, and in some degree cultural integrity. Mm. How did that uh, salsa background? How does it influence your choreography today? Uh, I don't know. You know, I, I think I've always, even as a young boy, I was always incredibly open to to the world, to life. Mm. Um, so I think I mean I carry I carry the the conga is deep in, in my in my soul, <laughs> my my choreographic soul. Yeah, in fact, you know, whenever I'm listening to music, the first thing I listen to is the percussion. So I think that's part of how it affects me and how it informs me in terms of how I move and how I choreograph. Right. But and and I also, you know, I, I as I've grown older, you know, I've, I've I trust that that all of that is deep rooted in my in my creative soul. So I just I just I just. I just bring it all into the room. Uh, this next question is from Jorge Barranco from New York City. What's your process when beginning to work on a new show? Uh, where do you begin and what gives you uh, your steam to go? Well, you know, whenever, no matter how many shows I've done, no matter how many numbers I've choreographed, it's always pen to paper. You know, you have a blank piece of paper and you go in, it's always a little bit scary. And it's always, no matter what I do, it's always a process because I begin to get really insecure before I even get into the room. But, you know, I let them, the, and I'm talking about the room in terms of when I begin to do my pre-production because I never walk into a rehearsal room without having a plan. Right. Um, but it's really interesting because I let it germinate. I, I always get restless, insecure, and it's not until I walk into the rehearsal room and I begin to dance and explore movement and ideas and storytelling that I become more relaxed and more mm. at peace. So, but it's always the same way. And and a lot of that is, you know, allowing life to, to just, you know, life to affect you. Research is really important to me. Um, as a matter of fact, when I did, um, when I did uh, On Your Feet, I, 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 I know it, even, I mean, I knew how to dance all of Gloria's music. I, you right. know, I grew up with her music, but it was very important for me to really understand the essence of, of the Cuban culture, music, and dance. So I actually made a pilgrimage to Havana. Wow. Uh, I was there for two weeks, and I studied on these great Afro-Cuban dance masters because I knew I wanted to know how Cubans moved and how they danced and also find out other cultural things that they did that I wasn't sure of. And so that is how deep I go when I do my my work. So I'm so fascinated by that, obviously. Um, I want to ask a little bit more about your research for shows like Memphis or, or Ain't Too Proud because they are so rooted in history. Uh, how, did, how does your re research process differ there? So my research for both of those shows began over a decade ago, um, when I was first asked to choreograph a show called Peggy Sue Got Married, which I did in, this, in the West End in 2001. Um, and that show took place in the late 50s. And mm -hmm. so uh, now this was, so I began to work on that show like 1998, 1999. So, you know, back then there was no, um, we didn't have YouTube like you kids do. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I actually had to go and 
find find videos you know i went to the to the uh library of film at television in new york city but also i was very lucky because there was a, a a video store in uh and i lived in california at the time called hollywood video and they actually had vhs tapes of of um of of you know of 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 uh, american bandstand and uh the the you know all oh hallelujah and i and i you know i would rent those videos and i would study it all but during that time you know i watched all of the temptations all of the four tops all of those singing groups from that time because i wanted to get my hands on a movement of that period um so and i and i dove in deep i mean i have i had all you know unfortunately i couldn't keep those vhs tapes <laughs> now we can watch them on youtube but um but that so in essence so when it came time for me to choreograph Ain't Too Proud, I had already watched all of their videos. I had already watched all of the footage. I knew everything about them. So, and and also I made a point that when I when I um, when I was asked to choreograph Ain't Too Proud by my my frequent collaborator and mentor Des Makinoff, you know that that I was going to do have my own point of view on it. That I wasn't going to just replicate. You know, I wasn't going to do a replica of their movement. I wanted to put my own stamp on it. But but I had I had all of that information in my subconscious, you know. So that knowledge gave me power in the room, gave me it liberated me. Thank you. I, I have to ask because I think it's my favorite move of all time: the thigh slaps in Memphis. It is so iconic. <laughs> <laughs> How did you come up with that? That you know? Oh, you mean the the the? Is that, you know, it's a mixture of stepping. Yeah. And, you know, I sort of, I, I was a little bit anachronistic, um, but stepping actually begun way in the 60s. And I didn't know this, but the Temps were actually the first, one of the first groups that started to do that. So it was a hybrid. You know, I, I, I function, I, I like to use modern choreography or not modern, but, you know, I, I, I'm anachronistic in the way I choreograph because I, I, I want it to be seen through the, through the lens of today. I don't really like. I don't like to, you know, this is how the twist happened, or this is how the bunny hop happened, or this is how the the the, the pony happened. You know, I think it's important for us to look at dance through the lens of evolution, because I just think that, especially for you, for young people, I want them to look at it and say, wow, that's cool. That, you know, I I, I don't think they'll they'll understand it if, if I do it exactly as I was done. Also, it will lose it will lose the energy and the effervescence of of of, of today. Thank you. Um, what do you look for uh, in dancers uh, and auditions? This question's from Megan Lee from Indiana. You know, I think I think we all as choreographers or as, as creative types, I think we always look to find a piece of yourself and everybody when you're creating. But I think I think the most important thing for me is I, I want I, usually when I when I have an audition, I don't demonstrate the choreography. My associate does, but I work on the choreography before we walk in there because I want. You know, I want the first of all, I want the the, choreo the the audition to be fulfilling for everybody, whether they get the job or not. I want them to walk out of there feeling like they've learned something and then they don't get the job that they just want to keep on dancing, that they want to keep on working hard. But I, I watch everybody's process. I watch how they walk into the room. I want I watch them how they learn. I watch how they relate to one another, how they're respectful of other people. But also I watch about how they're able to take the choreography, follow the counts, follow the movement, follow the style, but yet put a little bit of who they are into the movement. Because I think ultimately that's most important to me. Because I don't really like to see a chorus line of dancers who are looking exactly the same. I like the movement to be a specific way. I like it to be sharp. I like it to be defined. But at the end of the day, I want to see real people on stage. I want to, I want, or at least I want to, I love, I love dancers who are great actors. That's what I look for. You know, it's such a fine line when you go in the room. You don't want to, you know, do too much, but you want to still service, you know, the choreography, but you want to show out. I think a lot of our viewers have a hard time, you know, delineating. They don't, they want to overdo it. Um, can you speak on that a little bit? You know, are there ever people that come in that you're like, Ari, this is, this is too far? Yeah, I think I think again, you know, that is the thing that you have to learn. You have to be respectful. I think I you know, one of the things that that I want everyone to especially the just the younger generation is that to understand that what we do is sacred mm -hmm. and and it's an art form 
regardless of whether you're watching so you think you can dance world of dance whatever because all those shows make it look so easy or you know but we have to be respectful of what has come before us mm. so you know i'm respectful and of john robbins of michael kidd of michael bennett of all of the great or even even and we so i because i don't want the art form to get diluted you know, I demand a lot from my dancers when they walk into the room. I, I want them to, you know, to dress accordingly. I don't want people to come into the room dressing, wearing shorts because, you know, and sneakers because you, you should wear that when you go play basketball. Because <laughs> I want the I want the art form to remain, you know, we have to respect it. And, and, and all of us, each of us individually, have to make sure that we pass on this information. Now, George, uh, Danny, get me back on course because I'm I'm sort of pivoting from no, the original. I, I, I'm hanging on the words, please. No, 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 but, no, no. But remind me of the question because I just got off. I just got off course. Yeah, sure. So the question is, uh, you know, how to not be too much in a crowd. Right, right. So, so by respecting that, you know, again, I want people to be able to put a little bit of who they are into the choreography. But at the end of the day, you know, there's a style. You know that. You know, I'm not just. You know, it's just like whatever. You know, I, I wanted a specific way. You have to really listen and you really have to watch. Watch the associate or watch me. And when you make a correction, you know, listen to that, what they're saying to that other person because it may apply to you. And that's, you know, because that's what happens in the room. You're rehearsing for a number and you don't have time to be, you know, to be imparting that information on each person individually. You have to be a good listener Really follow follow the style. Res be respectful and learn about something about the choreography before you walk into the room. I remember, you know, I knew Jerome Robbins before I walked into audition for him. I knew about Fosse. I had studied from Gwen Verdon and Rankin and Chad Chad Bake or Chad Walker. You know, they had workshop classes. So be informed, be respectful, um, and really listen. Uh, you mentioned assistants and associates. Can you talk about how you select uh, assistants and associates? Yeah, of course. You know, it, again, the the room where I create is a sacred space. And uh, um, most, I've been very lucky. I've been very fortunate that some of my best associates, actually, unfortunately, they've all moved on to be the, uh, choreographers on Broadway. So, <laughs> so I'm, lo I'm, I'm, I'm losing all my associates. No, you know, but, but I have great taste, I think. Um, I have great instincts for, for really talented people, I think, just like my friend Jerry Mitchell does. Um, but, um, <laughs> no, you know, I, I, um, I, I, you know, I, what I do is, um, so like one of my associates for Jersey boys, who's still taking care of Jersey boys, I've known for over 30 years, Kelly mm -hmm. Devine, who was my associate on Jersey boys and, uh, and a couple of other shows, you know, I've known her since she was 14 years old, right. my great friend. And an incredible dancer, choreographer, Ed, Edgar Dino, I've known over 20 oh, years. So you know, Ed, Edgar is, is amazing. Yeah. You know, but I also, so what I do though is I invite people who I think I'm, I'm grooming to become my associates for other shows. I invite them to be part of my pre production team because mm -hmm. I, again, you know, that room that I do my pre production in is sacred. And that is when I can really be myself. I, I can really, you know, I can take. I can take chances. I can, I can fail. I can be free. I can be uninhibited. And so, you know, there's a young woman by the name of Jenny LaRoche, who was one of my dancers in, in summer. Yes, who's, she teaches for the studio. She's right, brilliant. Right. And Jenny LaRoche, I'm grooming Jenny to be my associate. I mean, she's amazing. Yeah. I also love, I also love really amazing dancers because they inspire me. You know, I'm getting to now, you know, not getting because it's been a couple of years now. I try to keep myself in really good shape, but you know now I can't do the things I used to, and I hate it because I want to be able to dance. Because right. it's important for me to feel the music and understand what the movement feels like. But so it's a uh, that's sort of the process of, of of you know it's just learning and understanding and, and really building a relationship with my associates. Cool, thank you. If any of our viewers watching have a question, please comment on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, we'll be bringing on a couple of you to ask questions to set your live. Uh, this next question is from Jeffrey Kerr from Raleigh, North Carolina. What was your favorite part of working on the Jersey Boys uh, movie? That's a tricky one. <laughs> uh, I think doing the finale, which was on the last day, was my favorite because that's the only, the first time that I felt like I was actually really 
putting out my own my own sort of newness onto the material because yeah. you know I, I as much as respect I have for Clint and the producers and so on and so forth I wish that you know they would have allowed me to to really re re like like re choreograph it for film and right. so I, I love working on the finale because the finale I did really fast I actually created it on my iPhone. Mm-hmm. Because Clan said, I want to do a finale like three days before we actually did it. And I was like, oh, my God. So I went with my associates and I was like, you know, I created this shot. It was like a continuous shot of my iPhone. Like, you never stop moving. And I created it. And I love, I love, I love that. You know, I love to be able to just, you know, use, just, just, just trust everything that I knew from the theater and, and be able to collaborate with Clint about how it was shot and, and how it ended. And, and, and then even on the day we were shooting, you know, he kept on throwing you know, all of these ideas, I mean, I just, you know, that, because that's how you create, that's how we create in the theater. And so I missed that, but that was the best part of it. Now you've done so much in your career. Uh, it, it's, it's been unbelievable. Is there anything that you have not done that you'd like to do? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of, of directing, chore- I mean, not in the process, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm beginning to direct and choreograph and I've been doing it for a few years now, but now I, I've made a, a conscious decision that that's what I'm going to do. Um, so that is the next phase of, of my evolution as a, as a creative individual. Uh, and, uh, I'm, I'm excited and, and, uh, optimistic about that next part chapter of my life. And I'm excited about the projects that I'm doing, yes. that I'm developing, uh, because they're, they're really representative of my, of my heritage. And you've also got to work with so many brilliant directors. I oh. feel like, you know, absorbing all that information and, and creating it and making it your own. I can't wait to see what you do. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's I, that's the thing is, is that I, I sort of feel like um, <clears throat> that I, I've been been studying, taking a master's, you know, course in direction from from Jerry Zaks, from <laughs> from uh, from Des Makinoff. But even Clint watching him work in the movie from Rob Marshall to Jerry Mitchell to mm-hmm. Michael Greif to Chris Ashley, uh, you know, it's just like really incredibly talented man who when I'm in the room with them, I'm the choreographer. But now I'm going to take all of those, all of that I've learned from them and make it, you know, have my own my own point of view. Now, I have a couple of uh, special guests I'd like to bring in to ask you a question, if that's all right. Yeah, of course. All right, let's bring them on in. Ah! Hi! <laughs> oh, my God. Amazing. <laughs> Latinos <Hello>. United. <laughs> yeah. This okay, Shereen is spectacularly talented. And, yes, and, Ra- and Raul's parts. Oh, my God. <laughs> Amazing. Hey. We're not done. Rose Parza and I are not done yet. Because I'm gonna well, get no, my hands No. I was thinking today about all the things we keep talking about doing. I have so you and I have so much to do. <laughs> We're like all the, I was like, Gonyo, we have a lot of plans. We do, we have we, we have, have to get back to it. We but, do. Well I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you're back. <laughs> Cause we've missed you. And it's time you got your eyes back. Well, as soon as they open the theaters. I <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and Shireen, Raul, did you see Shireen in the show? No, I didn't get to see oh it. Oh my god! I thought She's I had all the time in the world. Shireen, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope you don't know. I don't offend you, but she's she's like she's like the baby Audrey McDonald. That's what she is. That's what I kept on <laughs> That's saying. That's not. <laughs> is that offensive, <laughs> Shireen? No, absolutely not. It's just just to watch her. I watched her do her. I mean, well, just the way she's just uh, that just her voice and then this just her anyway she's really incredibly talented her final scene in west side is spectacular it's really really incredible she is unbelievable this is wow this is like i, I love this I'm not I love of, but what an amazing surprise very sneaky there danny i got you um, <laughs> raul can you talk a little bit about working with sergio uh and why he is just so brilliant so he's brilliant because he makes you actually work harder than you think you possibly can. That's that's, that's my, my my favorite thing about working with him is like he pushes you to the edge, and the second you're like I can't go any further, he goes yes you can. You're capable of more than you even realize, and it's an amazing skill. And he makes you better, not by 
not by uh, by breaking anything, but by just like going here and take my hand. Let's go. We can do this. And it's uh, it's amazing. It really is. Raul, so, Raul, yeah. Raul, thank you, Raul. I I I you know we had, I mean we had an amazing amazing experience working together. I mean that was one of the most positive things that came out of us working on that show. Yeah. Because because I knew of your talent, but then working by your side, the way that we worked together was so incredibly fulfilling, but more than anything, just like what you did with all of that. And and Thanks, Eddie. really, I mean, you're, you are, you are just, and to be able to, to know that you are triple threat, that was even better. <laughs> <laughs> Quadruple, if you count the piano. Oh yes, well yes, I mean, of course. Like being alive. <laughs> No, 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 he can play the piano. <laughs> well, I believe it. Yeah. Serene, same question. Can you talk uh, about working with Sergio? Yeah, I, I actually really, really agree with that. It's like we got into the rehearsal room and it was a, a whirlwind of like, we're mid tech and doing all this stuff. And it was really like, take my hand, like I'm gonna take you on this journey uh, really quickly and, and uh, make you, believe that you can do a lot of things that you that you never thought that you could and yeah i really appreciated that and then after we started previews i would every so often just like run into sergio and he would be like you know that final scene like it's really it's really getting there and like to have that check-in every few days was so great when i'm just kind of like doing the show like hoping that it's kind of coming somewhere and it's progressing in some way it was like it was a good like okay i can do this show today and see what happens uh, <laughs> and and move forward but yeah it's it's that it's that backbone i think of like more than just being choreographer it's like being there for all the actors and, and every part of what we're doing and creating it with you creating yeah. it with you, helping you helping you think like an actor about movement too not not just th there's a reason behind everything which is what you always hear about the greats you, you hear these stories from like Cheetah talking about what it was like to have Jerome Robbins choreograph something or or the stories about Fosse choreographing something where there's a monologue going on or a scene going on. There's a whole story happening. And that's how Set Here works. There's this feeling of we're coming at this and, and there's a we're dancing and there's a reason that we're moving in space the way we're moving because we are telling this story. We want these things. We're accomplishing these tasks. This is a moment where your body is telling that story just as much as any lines you have to say. Um, and it's explosive because then also, yeah, what Shereen was just saying, the checking in, the like, okay, this is good. How about that? This is getting there. You know, that we're, you work like this. Yeah. Which is why musicals are so amazing because, you know, a playwright can go home and write a play and just do it. And then the actors show up all by themselves. But a musical is made by the group. It just is. And, and it's, and the, the group shapes it all the time. Mm. Like alone. I'm 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 over I'm overwhelmed by by both of your generosity. That's thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, I mean, listen. I, I think at the end of the day, the 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 most important thing is this show. But also, I think that one of the things that I enjoy the most about working in musicals, as opposed to film, by the way, is is that we can we get to build create these beautiful family units, you know, and, and Raul and I haven't seen each other in a long time, but the experience of us working together on, on, on our show was invaluable and it's forever, ever, forever. We're always, we all, that connection, like it, our connection, a human connection and you too, Shereen, supersedes anything else. You know, it's like, that's it. We're gonna always gonna, but it's because we connected on a human level, and that happens in a musical. You know, we're creating together. I'm only as good as you, as you are on stage. You know, I can't impose me on you. You know, I, you're the conduit. You're you're the you're you're the instrument. I you know that's it. So it's um, that's 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 why it's it's you know sometimes I just think, oh my god, why am I still doing this? But it's because <laughs> you know I get to work with people with with you know the caliber and that talent. So. Serene, do you have a question uh, from a viewer for Sergio? I do. Um, so Dylan Grundy from North Carolina wants to know what to you is the best piece of art you worked on and what are you most proud of? The piece of art. Um, mm, you know, 
it's hard. It's like you have 12 children and it's like, which one is your favorite? <laughs> and that's, that's, that's tough to, you know, and it's, and they're all reflective of where you are in your life and, and the people that you are working with. So, you know, it's hard for me to say this was my favorite. Each one of them has their own special place in, 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 you know, in, 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 in my, um, in my life. Um, I think that, um, the, I think the ones that have been the truest who I am and that uh, and I've, I'm deflecting from answering your question are I think I think <laughs> I think on your feet because it's the closest to my family and to my heritage which I, I had never really I sort of put to the side for the longest time uh, and then I think ain't too proud because it ain't too proud I was just I was just being me and I was just dancing and I think for us, I'm sure, I, I don't know, Raul and, and Shireen, but when we can be the, our truest self on stage is when, you know, when just, I just think that that's when we really bring out the best, our best work and our best art. Mm -hmm. Raul, do you in turn have a question uh, for Sergio? I do, uh, from Molly Lanthrop from New York City, who would like to know what was your first exposure to dance and musicals and what piece do you think has influenced you the most? So, actually, so the first show that I ever saw was I went with my my one of my best friends, Suzanne Bastian, in high school. She took me to Canada's Wonderland, uh, a theme park that just opened. I grew up in Toronto, so um, it's on the outskirts of Toronto, and uh, and it was a show called The Best of Broadway. And I watched the, it was one of those theme park shows. And I remember looking at those guys and I thought, oh my God, that's what I want to do. I want to do that. And so that was, that was, I'm sure I the show. The theme park, that is so perfect. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I didn't, you know, I grew up, you know, my Latin family, you know, I, I listened to Celia Cruz, anything that we see, anything that we did was so Latin. I mean, I really didn't, and it was right there and then that I thought, oh my God, there's a new world, there's another world, there's another life out there. So I know, right? The the integrity of my response. So that wasn't quite as artful as, as no, uh, I, I would have liked. I, uh, I love it. I told I had an experience in my late 20s, early 30s where I went crazy for the Beatles. And I would tell everybody, like, this band is incredible. It's because my Cuban family was not listening to the Beatles. Like all this music that everybody takes for granted. We weren't right. listening to my house. Right. <laughs> You're like, yeah, they've been pretty good. I'm like, I just discovered this. <laughs> so that was that was so that was that. But then I saw Evita. I saw Evita. Uh, it came uh, to Toronto, and I didn't understand a lot of it. Um, I didn't understand a lot of it because I, you know, I was still learning English. You know, I was still like English was still my second language. But I remember seeing it for for the for the just the conceit of it. And I remember the tango dancers. I remember like fragments of it, but I think that left an impression on me in terms of how powerful theater could be. I'm with you on that one. That's a great show. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. I just want to thank you guys so much for coming on and asking questions. Shireen, it is such a pleasure. Uh, I, Shireen was a student of mine before booking West Side Story, so I am so incredibly proud of you, and I can't wait to be there when it opens again. Yeah. I want you guys to uh, sing together. Oh my God, those two voices together. We, we, we have, in a way, sort of yes. together. We just haven't sung together. Unbelievable. <laughs> this was, you know, this is like I mean, this we're is like together in a year. It's been a year, right? Since Rose yeah, Rose. exactly a year. Yeah. What did you, what, what did you do? You did a road show. Road show. What? Uh, a road show. Sondheim's road show at Encores. Oh, you did that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't see it. I missed it. Sorry. When what? I was probably in the middle of rehearsing something. It was last, it was last summer. Yeah, it was and everybody was like, oh my God, you're going to do West Side Story. Oh my God, you're going to do West Side Story. Oh my God, you're going to do West Side Story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was so fun, honestly. As soon as, as soon as you get, as soon as we get back, when, when that happens, you have to, um, you have to go see her. She's. I can't really, wait. I can't she, wait. She's unbelievable. I mean. And so, and you know, it's what, what I love the most was to to see her evolve and grow and become more confident. That was amazing for me to watch and witness every night. 
It's good. Thank you. It's good. Yeah, it's good. And then, <laughs> where Raul, she has to run around when she's doing um, uh, tonight. Like, she's running around. Like, you're just doing crazy things. Like, you're just doing things. It's just, it's just like, just, I did so much running. Really? Yeah, she's yeah, singing to and she's doing, <laughs> and she's singing tonight, like like way up here and like beautiful, and and she's like running up a storm. I'm like, thinking, oh my god, poor thing. And she's, but she's got it. She's doing I it. The first time we put that together, I finished, and I had to like hold on to someone because I was gonna pass out. Like <laughs> I was like hitting a high C and like booking it, like I was running a marathon, and I was like, um, I don't know if we can do this. We still do it though. And I then. Love it. And then, and then, and then, special. Yeah. And then, no, I didn't do that. No, that precedes me. And that precedes me. But then, but then, and, and then somewhere, and somewhere she's like crouching down and holding onto, onto Tony. And she's not even, there's no diagram support, what's diagram support whatsoever. And she's in there. But that is, you know, two things. I think that is like pure, just pure talent. And then the other thing is that, sort of say, but you're young, so you can't say to the director, ah, oh, excuse me, I can't do that. But so that <laughs> that kind of naivete is beautiful because she's actually doing it and showing that you could actually, you know what? You can actually do it. So eventually, yeah. eventually you're like, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but wait 20 I, I noticed, years. Uh, all my early musical performances, I was always jumping off the of theater. Wait, Raul, you have told me when I asked you to do this, like Raul, I had Raul spinning around, do the splits. I mean, he worked. I mean, it was amazing what I was asking him to do. Crazy, right. crazy stuff. Would you do would you do that for me still, Raul? Yes, I would. Of course I would. Okay, good. good. <laughs> 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 Thanks, <my break>. yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, we're lo we're losing Thank Danny. You. So appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, Danny, I think Danny's doing his interview at a, at a theme park. Oh, are we there? <laughs> are okay? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, cool. Sorry, I'm having a bad connection on my end. No worries. Um, so, I'm so glad we got to bring them in. Oh my God! What a surprise! Are you kidding? Are you kidding me? I have to text them right away. I'm, just, I love them both. I love them both. That was. Yeah. This question is from Susan Johnson from Michigan. Uh, what projects are you currently working on while in quarantine? So, um, I made a speech last year. Um, I love you both, Raúl and Shireen. Um, I made a speech last year at the Tony Awards, which um, really, I mean, first of all, while I was making the speech, I was surprised by the standing ovation that I got from my peers. Uh, but while I was making that speech, I was also making a contract, personal contract, that I, I was going to make sure that, ensure that that the stories of the Latinx community are being told, both in musicals and in drama. And, and I have to have a hand in it and I have to be in the front lines. So I'm working, presently working on four new shows, brand new shows, authentic, and they're all, so one of the ones I'm working on is um, so three of them are Latinx content. One of them is based on the play Real Women Have Curves, which was then made into a film. Uh, American Ferrara is in it. Uh, so I'm working with that on that. Uh, I'm producing it with my husband, uh, Jack Noseworthy, and with Nanco, uh, which is Barry Weiser's company. And we're having an amazing time. I have a, we have a phenomenal creative team. Uh, I'm also working on a, um, on a piece called Waiting for Snow in Havana based on a book by Carlos Ayer. It's a beautiful telling of, uh, uh, of the Pedro Pan kids. Um, you should look it up, it's beautiful. I'm also working on a project called Lives in Limbo, which is based on a, on a book written by a, a Harvard law professor uh, who documented, who followed the lives of, of uh, 150 undocumented immigrants for 12 years. Uh, and that's, uh, so we're working on that right now. And, uh, lastly, the other show that I'm working on, which is the one that will probably happen sooner rather than later, 
is called The Harder of They Come. It's based on, on a 1970s uh, cult film. Uh, it's, it's, it's a Jamaican film. Uh, Susan Lori Parks is the author. I'm co-directing with Tony Ticcone. I'm, um, I'm the choreographer. But all of these projects, I'm directing and choreographing. So those are the things that I'm doing. They're all socially incredibly important. Um, and they're also important to me because they address a lot of social issues and things and, and, and conversations that are actually really relevant today. Wow, you are doing so much. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Um, I have another viewer I'm going to bring on to ask a question. Uh, while I bring this viewer on, I'm going to adjust my microphone. So okay. There's some setting issues. Hi, Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? <laughs> Big fan, good. My name is Naja Hetzberger, and I went to Montclair State University, and I'm from New Jersey. Oh, fantastic. Um, and I just had a question for you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I had a question. I, w I wanted to know if you were always did you always want to be a choreographer or did you start off performing first and if so like where do, where do you get your choreography like inspirations from because i know you worked on ain't too proud big fan um and um i wanted to know like did you kind of look at the actual group and um take dance moves from the real life members of the group and put that in or did you completely just use your own original moves for that show so you know, I think I've always known I was going to choreograph since I was a little boy. Because even before I started to take dance, I was, I was, you know, I was choreographing numbers in high school. I, I choreographed the Dream Ballet in Oklahoma, and I had never even taken a dance class before. <laughs> you know, I was, I was choreographing like dance numbers in in our variety shows at our high school, but I wasn't even taking formal dance yet. So there was a part of me that's always had this talent. Um, yeah. But you know, part of that is how you how you harness that talent. And as a dancer, I still you know had it in the back of my mind that I wanted to choreograph. And what I did throughout my dance career, and I was very fortunate that I had a uh, I danced for ten years, ten like full on wow. hard years. <laughs> and but I also happened I was very lucky to work with and dance in some of the best shows. I danced in Jerome Robbins Broadway, and I danced in Fosse. Both, you know, both are the works of great masters. So, yeah. you know, I learned a lot by not only dancing the material, but also by, you know, experiencing their their works. But also during while I was dancing, uh, when I while, while I was dancing, I also assisted a lot of great, really incredibly talented choreographers. I was assisted to Jerry Mitchell, assistant and associate to Jerry Mitchell. I worked. I assisted Debbie Allen as a choreographer. I, I was wow. in the creative team, the production team, or skeleton crews, and, and assistant to Rob Marshall. So, who, who of course he choreographed and directed Chicago, and you know he's a, he's an incredible, incredibly yeah. gifted director forever. So you know I I feel like with dance, with choreography, with direction, you know it's not something you really academically learn. You actually mm -hmm. have to. I feel like you have to study from great mentors. Um, and so that is how I became a choreographer. You know, and then when it came time for me to begin to do my own work, I'd already studied from these great, incredible, talented people. As far as my work on Ain't Too Proud, I had, you know, before I choreographed the show, I had already done my research 15 years before because I had watched all of their videos on television. But I also, it was important for me to have my own take on the material because first of all, that's not my work. It's somebody's Charlie Atkins choreography. Uh, yeah. is, is, uh, uh, so I, I didn't, you know, I, I sort of felt like it was important for me to be able to look at it, let the music and the movement in, empower me. Uh, sorry, the, 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 the research that I had done empower me, but then look at it through the lens of today and dance today. Cause I want people like you guys you, Naja, to be able to look at it and say, wow, that's really cool, that's really hip, but your parents to be able to look at it and say, that's what the Temptations did. But in essence, yes. it's not, you know, so it's hip and it's cool, but yet in excess, and it's accessible. And, you know, mm -hmm. and I had these guys who are incredible. I mean, Ephraim Sykes, who I've known since he was 20 years old, because he was in my cast in Memphis, um, uh, Derek Baskin, James Harkness, Jeremy Pope, and even to this day, my new guys, you know, they're uh, Joan Jackson, you know, they're all fantastic. So, you know, I also was great was that I had my fingertips, you know, 
I think the the real temptations could never do the things I was asking. You know, Ephraim Sex. You know, Ephraim Sex. I said to Ephraim Sex, Ephraim, you know what? I want you to do a double. I want you to jump up, throw your mic up in the air, do a double tour, a split, and catch the mic before you know before it lands on the floor. And he was Ephraim was like, okay. Oh. You know, so I don't think that you know I don't know that the real David Ruffin could do all of that. So, right, exactly. <laughs> Thank you so no, much for your no, time. It's, My pleasure, no, of course. It is only a matter of time before you hire her. Um, <laughs> my, my, my big question is, once she has the job, um, what makes you want to rehire an actor mm. or a dancer? Yeah, you know, I think again. I think that, you know, I always want dancers or anybody in the room to remember that it's so important to carry yourself with so much respect for the work, the people that you work with, treat everyone with respect, with integrity, mm -hmm. devotion, discipline, because you you and and I feel this way about my work. You know, you're only as good as your last job. You're only as good as your last project. You're only people remember. People remember, and I, I always, you know, I always hire the people who are who are fantastic collaborators. Who are not only gifted because talent only gets you so far. There is a there is a humanity part of the work, and you everyone in in our theater and now more so than ever before. You know, where in the present sort of racial, social, social and racial climate that we have to really be able to to navigate it as in such harmony. And, and you know, the conversations that we're all having now are, are I mean, it's, it's a delicate time. And yeah. but it's very important to be always be mindful of that. Really important. Yeah. Well, thank well, you so much. So nice to see you. Thank you, you too. Bye. Thank you. My pleasure, of course. Danny, I'm going to... Sidio, this next question. You know what? Let me plug yeah. you in because I just noticed that my... Uh, I've been on the phone. I've been on my phone, on my computer for like three hours. So okay, I just... Let, let me plug... Let me... Excuse me. I'll be right back. I'm just charging you. You're fine. While Sidio is plugging in, I'm going to let you know about uh, our next upcoming Q&A. Uh, that's on Wednesday, and that'll be with choreographer Dennis Jones, which we're very excited about. Then Friday, you can turn in, uh, tune in for uh, our college Q&A, uh, and then we're back next Monday with a different uh, artist. I'm back. Good to go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Let me find a good question here. Give me one sec. Uh, Sadio, you talked a little bit about working on film. Uh, how does it differ choreographing from film than choreographing for the stage? Yeah, you know, actually, my uh, um, the, the the best the best I, though it's not film, but it's, it's it's I mean, it's like the same genre. You know, I think I think, and I've done this with all of the the numbers that I've done for the Tony Awards or for the Thanksgiving Day Parade. That for me, it's always it's always been really important to choreograph those numbers for television. And if they were they were being filmed for 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 film, you know, I would again reimagine, rethink, because the two the genres are different, the mediums are very different, um, and it's so you know you really and and because the that sort of the narrative is the way that you know the camera moves, where it moves, and you know I think I feel that in in. When you're choreographing for film, I think it's important for the, the director of photography and for the director to be able to take into account how the choreographer seizes the numbers because they may not be able to understand how to capture and the movement sometimes doesn't translate, you know, if it's not filmed properly. Um, you know, I mean, a jump, you can't film a jump like this. You have to go under, you know, below so you can get the nice height. Or, you know, how to get... I don't know. I just think that there's a real. I think that it should. There should be a real collaboration between. I haven't. My all, most of my experience has been choreographing for all of the television shows that I've done. Not for. I mean, my my film. My experience on film is is not as as large. Uh, but you know, that is that is that is the difference. That you really have to make sure that you're choreographing for the camera. 
Uh, you mentioned working on the West End. Uh, the Growing Studio has schools uh, in uh, London as well as in New York. And we find that the differences between education and just working with uh, students and actors over there is so different. Can you talk a little bit about working in the West End versus working on Broadway? So, you know, I used to think that. Um, so when I went, when I choreographed Peggy Sue got married, which was in 2001, almost, yeah, almost 20 years ago, uh, the caliber of the musical theater talent was nowhere what it is now. So, so I choreographed Peggy Sue got married there, all the multiple companies of Jersey Boys, uh, Memphis, and On Your Feet. And I was very impressed when I went back to audition for Memphis to see, cause I didn't even think we were gonna be able to find black performers who could do what our show, what our cast did in New York. And I was blown away by the talent. So, you know, there's been a real, a real evolution. Um, you know, there's some cultural stuff that happens there. Americans are, are aggressive. You know, we're gonna. I'm gonna show you. Um, I don't want to, and 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 be you, uh, anyone from England. Please forgive me if if I'm, if I'm if I get this wrong. But what I recall at the beginning was that people were afraid of really showing you that part of like that that Americanness or that actual that other quality is because if you show too much, your peers are going to think you are being too keen, and that's looked down upon. We look at it differently here in America, which is the reason why, why I came to America as well. You know, I love the American way. I mean, it's, you know, it's this, you know, we just, it's just like, we just, we, we just, we're just so passionate, basically. That's really the, the word that I can use, you know. Americans are passionate and they're, they're fearless. Too keen, that's the exact terminology. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think, I think, you know, that if there was anything that I would just notice, yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, if there was anything, would be that it would be that they were, they would be a little bit more reserved. But the talent was was really, really, I mean, outstanding. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is my last question for you. Uh, this is for all of those dancers out there who want to be choreographers. Uh, what is the first step they should take uh, to achieve uh, what you've achieved in your career? Well, I think the thing to do is really, I mean. You have to really begin to, um, but listen, there's other choreographers who've just gone and done it without having the path that I took, but I would, I can only share my experience. And I think that if you're really serious about it, I think you should begin to reach out to a choreographer or choreographers you respect and admire, whose work you respect and admire, and uh, be part of their of creative process, be part of their pre-production team. Uh, you know, or if you get hired for one of their shows, you can be, you know, you can put yourself, put your name in the hat to be a dance captain because the relationship between a choreographer and the associates and then the dance captains, I mean, that's one of the things that I did with Jerry Mitchell was, you know, Jerry found me in an audition in Los Angeles for Jerome Robbins Broadway. The next time we worked together with Jerry, I was, you know, his dance captain and then he asked me to be his assistant. You know, I feel like there is a real process. I don't want people to get to get impatient and think that they all of a sudden can be choreographers, especially now with, with our phones and the accessibility and the social media. There is a real craft because, you know, when you when you only I always think you only get one shot. And that's why I love that, you know, that lyric from from the I don't know the the, the lyrics from Hamilton well enough, but I always but I always think of the of, of, of the Eminem song and my eight mile because you, know, you only get that one shot so no matter what you do you're always only going to get one shot so you always when you get that opportunity to choreograph a show you have to be able to have done your work and to have been able to be prepared so that when you when you get that opportunity you can hit a hit a home run and you can only do that by preparing and how do you prepare that by learning from mentors by really studying the art form not I mean, if you want to go academically, you can, but by seeing other other choreographers work, and then and then really really practicing, really like you know choreographing a regional show, a small production, because it's once you're in the trenches and when you really discover. 
you know, I, I had a teacher in college tell me once that luck is when opportunity meets preparation. Mm -hmm. And I just think that that's so right. Yeah. Spot on. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Sidio, how can we stay updated with all the things that you're doing? Uh, do you have a social media handle? I do. Uh, I'm at Sergio Trujillo one on Instagram. My, my Twitter, I don't remember what my Twitter is. <laughs> That's okay. They'll find it. People from Google. I said, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. It is such a pleasure to talk with you and to learn from you. Uh, and I can't wait to see uh, the work you do next. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. And I love my surprise. That was unbelievable. Okay. So I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Okay. Take care. Okay. Thanks for watching. Everybody. My pleasure. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. Uh, yeah.